What's going on guys, Apex here, and today I got a new Destiny video for you. Today we are actually going to be talking about my general impressions of the DLC, Curse of Osiris, as well as kind of where the game is at for me currently right now, and whether or not you should pick up the DLC or if you should return to Destiny 2 at all. So to start out with the DLC, we should talk about the campaign. Uh, it is a strong story from start to finish, and I actually know why I'm doing these missions. That is a huge bonus. Uh, Bungie has had problems with that in the past. The design and sound once again is breathtaking, as Bungie always nails this. However, Bungie still fails to give us exciting gameplay moments in this well-told campaign. I will warn you now, spoilers are ahead, so feel free to leave. Let's start off with the good things about the campaign. Number one, the design of new areas and some new bosses that aren't plain reskins. That is obviously good. Bungie is known for reskinning bosses a lot. And in this campaign, I can guarantee you that there are a couple brand new bosses to fight. The sound is still amazing. I don't think I need to say much else about this. Destiny sound is always great. Number three, some, and by some, I mean very little NPC and Guardian fights. A step in the right direction, but I will need more. It was nice to see Ikora leave the tower to open a door for us, and it was interesting to see Osiris and his projections help us defeat the final boss, but it could be better. However, in general, I did like the direction, and I think it's an interesting element to the campaign. Number four. The story itself is absolutely fascinating and some of the design aspects really push the fascination to the peak of my Destiny campaign experiences. The moment we first see the past or Golden Age Mercury was stunning with a compelling narrative from Osiris. It gave me a true sense of awe and wonder. With that being said, let's talk about number 5. The very well written story along with masterful work on exotic lore tabs. I enjoyed hearing a new ghost for the first time throughout the majority of the DLC's campaign. Sagira is voiced perfectly and it was an overall enjoyable experience. Osiris and his projections were also voiced perfectly and it was pleasing to hear some of Osiris' wisdom. The dialogue between Ikora and Sagira was also just as enjoyable as the rest of the story. We got a bit of backstory with Ikora, Sagira, and Osiris that was actually interesting and makes me want to know more. So moving on to my own dislikes of the campaign, I need to state that I do believe Bungie was experimenting with some of the elements and that is great and I am all for it. But some things just don't work for me. To specify, we will need to start with my number one complaint, the infinite forest. It was possibly overhyped and us as players, including myself, may have expected too much from it. I was hoping for some type of incentive, perhaps to actually kill the enemy combatants. Going through the campaign on my first character, I actually took the time to clear each region before running to the door to open the next. By the end of that character's campaign, I decided I would start running through as it is boring and repetitive even though it does change quite a bit each time you go in. Outside of the small chance of getting a legendary engram, there is no incentive to kill anything on your way to the best elements of the story. You enter the infinite forest six times, I believe, during the two hour to two and a half hour story. You will, that is a lot of time wasted in a kill this, open door, or just sprint straight through area. Again, the design is great, and it is nice that it randomly generates structures and different enemy types to fight, but it doesn't add to any of the interesting parts of the story or gameplay. Now, I don't want to just sit here and bash the Infinite Forest because Bungie tried something new, and I have to respect that. It was cool to see something like this, and it still does have the potential to possibly become something more. With the majority of the cons I present to you in this video, I will also present a potential change to make said con at least a little better in my personal opinion. In regards to the infinite forest, I would love to see one of two things. A small horde mode where the structures leading to the past, present, and future are all built and ready, but as you start running through, enemies spawn at harder and harder difficulties as you make your way through. Obviously, it would still have to be possible to run solo in addition to said mini horde mode, 
it would be sweet to get random modifiers every time you enter the forest. Maybe mayhem recharge rates on abilities or arc burn, etc. My second problem with the campaign, aside from running through the forest too much and way too often with no real reason to do anything there, is the use of recycled content. I realize from a story standpoint, it made sense to go back to IO, Nessus, and the EDZ. The EDZ and Nessus I actually didn't have much of a problem revisiting because it was at least in new areas of those planets. But IO had a really good chance to take us to the fabled Pyramidian Lake just past the pit where the door stands that is unfortunately blocked off and we must once again dive into the pit to kill some fanatics and shoot a floating box. It was unfortunate to see that happen when it potentially could have been that golden age mercury reaction. The wow reaction. We will just have to wait and see the lake. To summarize, I think the story was fantastic. The depth and lore slides is interesting. The voice acting is top notch. The final boss was at least somewhat new and innovative. And the infinite forest is a glaring issue taking away some of the fun. Now we need to talk PvP. And oh man, I have some issues here. Probably going to be more in depth in another video since I already know this is starting to get long. And most of this has already been said countless times even before the DLC launched. But I never noticed it to the point I am noticing since DLC launched in the last 48 hours. Number one, going into quick play solo is just nasty. I've been matched with countless teams of four, and when I managed to get into a game with maybe two teams of two players, the enemy still is all huddled up, wrecking any dreams of being able to play in the Crucible as an aggressive solo player. With Season 2, I was hoping Bungie would address some of the more important issues with PvP and fixes to why it's boring as hell to play, and just as boring to watch, because of how badly teams feel the need to huddle up and teamfire. If the time to kill was slightly decreased, enough to make Handon's 3-tap again for pulse rifles to kill in less than 4-5 to five bursts, and to make in general everything more consistent, namely in air accuracy, then we could possibly have an exciting PvP experience once again. I realize Bungie is trying to make, more, trying to make this a more competitive-like game, or at least that is the direction they seem to have taken. But at the same time, they have admitted to wanting to reduce the skill gap, which started the whole in-air ac in accuracy nerf. You can't have a competitive game without a skill gap. It becomes stale, boring to play, and boring to watch. Now that that little rant is over, I will tell you now I may move my PvP frustrations to a separate video since it doesn't directly correlate to Curse of Osiris. All I have to say on that front is the maps are nice. That is all right now. Moving on to brand new Forge feature in Destiny 2. I think it is good but could most definitely be better. I like the fact you have to do a quote unquote quest to get materials to fuse said materials into your weapon to create it. However that so called quest doesn't make me play anything I have been playing already for the last three months. Currently I'm halfway through on my second Forge weapon and all I have is all I have to do is grind public events. Not saying the grind is not welcome, because it definitely is, but couldn't it be a little more interesting? Rather than grinding public events, at least 20 per weapon to be exact, shouldn't that have been a perfect opportunity to make me go to the infinite forest and kill X amount of certain enemies, perhaps even with a certain weapon class? I think that would have ended up being more enjoyable experience personally. Perhaps they could have even given heroic adventures a meaning by making me go do those on top of killing certain enemies with certain weapons. With all that being said, and all I think the forge is neat and it adds a much needed grind to the game. No matter how boring the grind is, and the weapons actually surprisingly seem to be worth it. Next up, and I promise I am getting ready to end this video, we need to talk about heroic strikes and heroic adventures. In my opinion, Bungie totally dropped the ball on heroic strikes. No strike specific loot yet, which I can live with for now, but the real problem is that there are no modifiers in this playlist at all. That is what made heroic strikes in D1 enjoyable. 
It blows my mind that heroic adventures, which were done very well, have modifiers, but not the strike playlist. Honestly, it is a little upsetting, but I will live. Hopefully, they add modifiers back with strike scoring in the future. I currently have no reason to play strikes. Moving on, we need to talk about Mercury and how painfully small the patrol zone is. You may say, well, there is an infinite forest in the past, present, and future. Those are the real key points. Well, then, why can't I go to these places on a regular patrol? Imagine the potential that Mercury had. Base Mercury with a lighthouse, the infinite forest, and all the Mercury eras in one patrollable zone. That would be that would bring Bungie up to a whole other level. The crazy amount of public events, chests to find, lost sectors, and the ability to actually ride my sparrow. It could have been great. Maybe it still can be. We will just have to wait and see. I know I may sound like I am just bashing Bungie and it may seem like Bungie just can't win. I want to put it out here right now that I am enjoying this expansion and I am enjoying Destiny 2 right now. I have many exotics to chase, new reasons to play, and a grind to collect everything I can. It is a good expansion and it does deserve the $20 price point. Yes, there could be improvements, but like many things, it will take time. Bungie was also developing Curse of Osiris probably at the same time they were developing the game itself, only giving them a short time to make drastic changes since the launch. I am looking forward to the raid tomorrow and all of us and all of the season 2 changes as well. However, there is still one more thing we need to seriously discuss. Eververse Trading Company. Eververse is still not pay to win, thankfully. But it does have a lot of really cool vanity items that I believe should be awarded through some gameplay. How cool would it be to get the new selfie emote from a raid chest? Or some of the new shaders at the end of a crucible match? Instead we just grind a level bar for an engram that devalues all of our loot. Exotics for example. I prefer quests over engrams or even random drops from chests because it creates memories. I still remember where I got my first Galahorn. It was the Gorgon Maze exotic chest in the Vault of Glass. You know where I got all of my favorite Destiny 2 exotics? Some random engram I found doing a public event or a crucible match. I know I'm a little off topic talking about exotics, but it works the same way with the illuminated or bright engrams. Some of my favorite items in D2 are things I've gotten from Eververse. Why can't all of her loot be obtainable outside of leveling up? Again, it would be so cool to get new vanity items through gameplay, it really needs to happen. The biggest problem in Destiny 2 right now, if I was to give it, give it to you in a single sentence, is that we have a bunch of activities to play, but no reason to play them. Add our reverse stock to every chest and every possible drop in the game for a chance to obtain some cosmetic loot. In all, Curse of Osiris is definitely worth picking up if you like Destiny. If you moved on because the economy and endgame was so terrible, you may not want to pick this expansion up yet. Give Bungie some time to correct their mistakes. In their recent podcast, they did say that they'd be switching focus from a casual player's needs to us hardcore player's needs. Only time will tell what great additions and changes Bungie will make moving forward with Destiny 2. This has been Apex. I appreciate the support on my videos. Feel free to start a conversation with me in the comment section. And if you have made it this far, leave a made it to the end and what you enjoy about Destiny 2 comment down below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.